you know those Looney Tunes cartoons, how they used to always have the the angel and the demon pop up on Porky Pig's shoulders or Bugs Bunny's shoulders, whispering to come one way or another that the angel is saying, come and do the nice, righteous thing, the good thing, the lovely thing, the kind thing, and the demon's there saying, just go for it, make them pay uh, to what you want to do, all those kind of voices. Now, while we don't have angels and demons in reality, whispering to us there are two voices calling out and we're introduced to them today in Proverbs chapter 9 in our devotion it's the voice of wisdom and the voice of folly whispering to you telling you to do very different things let's have a look we're in Proverbs chapter 9 wisdom has built her house she has carved out her seven pillars she has prepared her meat she has mixed her wine she has also set her table she has sent out her female servants. She calls out from the highest points of the city, whoever is inexperienced, enter here. To the one who lacks sense, she says, come eat my bread and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave inexperience behind and you will live. Pursue the way of understanding. The one who corrects a mocker will bring abuse on himself. The one who rebukes the wicked will get hurt. Don't rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. Rebuke the wise and he will love you. Instruct the wise, and he will be wiser still. Teach the righteous, and he will learn more. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be many, and your years and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, you are wise for your own benefit. If you mock, you alone will bear the consequences. Folly is a rowdy woman. She is gullible and knows nothing. She sits by the doorway of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling to those who pass by who go straight ahead on their paths. Whoever is inexperienced, enter here. To the one who lacks sense, she says, stolen water is sweet and bread eaten secretly is tasty. But he doesn't know that the departed spirits are there, that her guests are in the depths of Sheol. And so here are these two voices that are constantly whispering and speaking, even shouting to the same group of people, wisdom and folly. Notice they both speak to the inexperienced, that they're saying, come with me and you know, but saying at you know, the start of your life, you don't know anything and you grow up and, 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 and the same two voices are calling out to you and they want to mold you and shape you into uh, the person you're going to be and uh, into their image. Right, the wise person wants you to be wise, and the fool folly wants you to just be an idiot and to to do your own thing and go your own way. Notice that wisdom, uh, they're, they're both offering meals. Right, uh, wisdom is offering a meal she's prepared herself and worked hard for, and has organised things and organised life. Folly, what's the food she's offering? Well, stolen meat is sweet. Just go, you know, take someone else's hard work, steal it for yourself. Uh, it'll give you a thrill that you won't get otherwise, and it'll be easier. And so take the easy path. And so these voices are calling out to the inexperienced. They're both saying, enter here, come into my place, come and eat this food that I've prepared, or come and, and, and well, steal for yourself and, and just get ahead in life and you make your own way with the least effort you can possibly do. And so there is a kind of fundamental divide between what uh, a wise person is going to look like in the end and a fool. One is well prepared, uh, works hard, organises life, provides for themselves and for others, and the other one just takes, 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 gives into their base desires and wants ease. Notice that um, wisdom is uh, saying particular things. Uh, wisdom points to the fact that um, when you have cut out of the inexperience, that there's several uh, outcomes, right? There are people who are um, mockers, people who are righteous, and people who are wise, and how they respond to uh, voices giving them uh, the uh, more wisdom and advice and, and God's word and so on respond very differently. 
you know, you grow up from being inexperienced and become a mocker, the mocker won't accept any advice. They'll just hammer you back. They'll say, oh, you're dumb, you're stupid. And so don't be a mocker is really what he's saying. But also the wise will know that there's some people who it's just going to be hard work and a waste of time uh, trying to correct in the long run. Uh, and so the one who corrects a mocker will bring abuse on himself. Now, wisdom is still trying to correct the mocker at that point, isn't she? So she hasn't quite given up, and God has never let a person go. But be aware that those who try and correct a mocker are going to bring abuse on themselves. It's just going to be hard work, and uh, you're going to cop a face full. The one who rebukes the wicked is going to get hurt, right? They're going to get punched in the face. The evil person just doesn't care. Uh, about hurting you, hurting your feelings, hurting something. And so if you're saying, well, please stop being mean, uh, bang, punch in the face. Um, and so part of wisdom is understanding that there are people who uh, just like the way they are and that that's how they're going to respond. Whereas the wise person, when they're instructed and rebuked, they will love you. And he's saying, you know, he's, he's not just telling you how to relate to other people and to categorize them all. He's actually, wisdom's telling us to, uh, to be wise, right? To be the kind of person who doesn't just mock back, the per kind of person who just doesn't punch back, but the person who loves the person who rebukes them, right? Actually wants instruction and wants to learn. Uh, teach the righteous and that he will learn more, right? We, we're being called by wisdom to be someone who is... Uh, responsive to advice, responsive to rebuke, responsive to teaching, responsive to the Word of God in the end, that we don't want to be those people who just fly off the handle, right, or go, uh, when we hear God's Word. The other thing that wisdom says is that you've got to go to God, right? God is the start. Right back at the start of the book in Proverbs 1, uh, the fear of the Lord is beginning wisdom. Here it's reinforced. Verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. You want to know what life's about? Well, God is the source. God is the goal. God is everything. And God has imbued, as we saw in the last chapter, this world with the wisdom that comes from him. He has set the world up a certain way. You want to know how to get ahead, how to make have a long and happy life, how to how to you know things are supposed to work, listen to God. God is the beginning of wisdom. What does folly say on the other hand? Well she calls out to the inexperienced, just come in, take it easy, rip people off, do what you want, and you'll get more of a thrill in life because stolen water is sweet and bread eaten secretly is tasty, it's kinda of like the, you know, the the advice of folly is to go what's going to give you a thrill and what's going to give you a thrill are naughty things that you might get caught doing in one sense uh, and and it's just so dumb it is so dumb right obviously the wise way is uh, the way to go but um, the appeal of folly is the thrill right the thrill and I guess that's part of the the challenge of today's world is that we have these uh, constant call for self-gratification and instant gratification. You do retail therapy, you eat chocolate, you do what you want, and you, you, you don't take into account anyone else. Just gratify yourself, give in to your cravings, and do it now. That is the voice of folly, right? Loud and clear. Here God is telling us what the voices are going to be saying. You listen to the voice of wisdom, right? Telling you how to relate to others, telling you not to be a mocker, telling you not to be wicked, telling you to fear the Lord, to receive correction and rebuke and teaching and training in a way that you love those who are trying to help you and help you to grow to be wise and that you'll love God particularly who is the source of all wisdom and knowing that his ways are right, they lead to good outcomes in the long run. They lead to eternal life in the end as you come to the Lord Jesus and receive the life and forgiveness he's offer and receive him as Lord. Uh, and so hear the voice of wisdom. Don't listen to the voice of today's age, which is really the voice of folly that we're being warned about. It's been the voice of folly in every age, really. Uh, but today you just hear it loud and clear in everything. And as we soak ourselves uh, in our free time, in just foolishness, in just kind of stuff, 
that we, you know, as we, we just binge watch YouTube and Netflix and TikTok and just fill our minds with rubbish and play the apps. And uh, it's just foolishness, this instant gratification. Think, plan, pray, look to the Lord who is the source of wisdom and you will find life, you'll find joy, you'll find satisfaction and purpose and meaning because God is the source of all wisdom. He, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding and in Him is wisdom, joy, life. Uh, don't be a mocker, don't be evil, be righteous, be wise. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for your word and thank you for the Proverbs. We pray that you help us to keep looking to you, to not be wanting instant gratification all the time. Though that voice keeps calling out to us and we are so at ease and have so much time and money and things on our hands that we just are bored and so we want to be listening to this voice of folly. Help us to resist it. Help us to take careful note of the voices around us and the calls of this world, the temptations, and help us to listen to the voice of wisdom, to look to you, to prepare for the future, to plan ahead, to understand that you have made this world and that you are the source of all wisdom, understanding, life, joy. We pray that we might find everything in you and that we might not be the mockers who just shout back when people say anything to us, that we might not be the evil people who punch and hurt when people try to you know, challenge us, uh, but that we might listen, we might hear well, we might respond actually with loving those who try to help us, and that we might uh, grow in, in our wisdom and learning and understanding, that we might not be inexperienced, but we might be yours forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. Catch you again for another devotion tomorrow.